What's going on guys, Linus here, and welcome to Kingdom New Lands. For those of you that don't know, Kingdom is a, a little indie game that came out last year, and I could say that without a doubt, it is my favorite indie game of that year. Uh, I very much enjoyed it, and now they came out with Kingdom New Lands. It is coming out uh, on, I think, Tuesday, August 9th. And I did receive an email with some information that I'll read to you guys, just so you know uh, how Kingdom New Lands is different from the original Kingdom. Uh, now, if this looks interesting to you, just know that if you own the original Kingdom, which is on Steam already, um, you actually get New Lands for free, if I'm not mistaken. Um, <clears throat> let me know if I'm wrong about that, but it should be on the Steam page. But basically, it is different, so I've got this email here that I'm just going to read out to you guys before I actually jump into the game. Uh, it says, uh, let's see, what to expect with Kingdom New Lands. I'm not going to spoil much, though, as it means to keep the joy of discovery intact. You're a Kingdom veteran, so you already know the basic gameplay. Here are a few key things that have changed. The end game is different. This is no longer just a portal smashing game. There's a new win condition, and it's much more obvious this time around. I'm not saying what it is, though. Mystery. There are different lands now. When you beat the first land, you'll find yourself traveling to a second, larger land. You beat that, and you'll head off to a third, even larger land, etc. When beating these lands, you'll unlock things. What sorts of things? Well, that's for you to discover. Let's just say that by the time you reach the final land, that you'll have a lot of options to help you defeat said land. There are, reason there are seasons in this game. Not reasons. Well, probably reasons as well, but seasons. And they impact the game in regards to how long you have before you must complete a land. I won't say much more than that, but just know that 100 plus day games aren't a thing anymore. There are other subtle changes in there, stuff that we address due to community feedback from the original game and whatnot, including how portals behave, how blood moons work, and more. So that is all the information that I received. Now, I did play a little bit of Kingdom New Lands already because I was a beta tester, so I already know a little bit, but I will not be spoiling anything, and I will just be explaining stuff as we go. So I just started the new game. Um, it says, again, the queen will try to last. Uh, normally it gives you a different message when it's your first time playing, but like I said, I already started the game once, and so when you start a new game, it gives you that message. But this is us, we are a queen, and this is the, uh, the start of the game, we got a nice little kingdom title, crumbling down. Look at that, and we got a ghost here. I honestly have no idea what the ghost really is, or what it does. But every time at the start of the game, I've seen a ghost, but I don't really know uh, what that is all about yet. I guess we'll find out. So here we go. This is the very starting area. We get a nice number of coins to start out with. I am using a controller, so it'll give me... Um, at the start, you get some button prompts. Those will be controller uh, related. It says X, but when I press A on my Xbox controller, it'll just drop a coin. And this is what the core gameplay is like. You don't fight yourself, but you hire other people to fight for you. Uh, like I said, I am a Kingdom veteran. I have played the first game and I've beaten the first game. Or the original game, I should say. Oh, thank you. So I already kind of know how everything works and whatnot, but I'm going to take it really slow and explain everything to you guys. So we just got one guy with a bow. They're capable of fighting for me. And this guy's a hammer, which means that he's a builder. So if I now do this, if you stand over a little dirt mound like this and uh, hold your button, he will start building a wall for you. Only builders can do this, obviously. And it says build, expend, defend. And that's pretty much it in terms of instructions. All of the rest of the game, it is up to yourself to find out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recruit some more guys, which is definitely a very important thing in this game. If you do not have enough people protecting your kingdom or building things, it was not going to look good for you. So this also new, it's a little hot, and I'm about 90% sure this is where that merchant lives that we saw earlier. There's also a ship now, but this is completely broken. So I'm just going to leave this alone for now. It clearly takes a lot of coins to really get anywhere with this. And here we go, just like in the original kingdom. There are chests on, I believe, either side of the map that will give you some starting coins. Uh, this little chapel thing also returns. I'm pretty sure you need to uh, invest some coins into that so that you can actually 
uh, build stone walls later. That's a second little, little chest. That's not bad. So I'm gonna go further right because I want to see if there's any more. Whoa, hello. All right, this is actually new to me. This was in the original game, and I'm pretty sure it will make your archers stronger temporarily. But I actually had not encountered this in the beta, so this is different. Okay, this is bad. We've got some enemies that are gonna show up. There we go. So, um, basically the thing is, enemies will show up during the nighttime, so apparently it already is nighttime. It's kind of difficult to tell when you're out in the forest, but it is nighttime. Enemies are gonna start showing up. They're gonna try to steal your crown, that's what they're all about. But you can actually distract them by just giving them a coin. Now during the first day, or maybe the second day, that's not gonna be a problem. Because there's not gonna be that many enemies, like you just saw, there's only two enemies. It's not that bad. But, uh, later on you're gonna see a lot more enemies. So then, you know, at that point you can't simply just drop coins to, uh, to do away with them. This also tells me that the portal where enemies spawn is most likely on the right side. Alright, let's see. So that's two archers. I'm actually gonna get two more. So we recruited four people, I believe, on the right. So I'm gonna get three archers. And I'm gonna get one more builder. So we can actually go around and build things more effectively. So like I said, I did play uh, New Lands for a little bit, but that said, do not expect me to win in my very first run. This game is, it, it looks deceptively easy, uh, or simple, when it's just not. It's very, very challenging, and I've had a lot of fun with the original game. That was actually um, a time during which I live-streamed a lot more. A lot of people showed up. Uh, to watch the game, and everybody's trying to figure out how to beat the game and things like that. It was very exciting. Alright, so there in Roman numerals, you'll see that it's day two. Which means it's now safe to me, for me to, to venture to the left. And recruit some more people over there. I'm not gonna go too far, because there's another thing we have to do back at base. That I probably should have done before I, uh, run out here. Also, your horse does get tired when you sprint too much, and then you have to actually start walking or actually stand still. Uh, sometimes you'll see a little patch of grass like this. It's a little tough to see, maybe. But your horse can eat this, and then it'll speed up his, uh, his recovery. And then he can, uh, can run earlier. Or quicker, I guess. But yes, yeah, so let's go back to base camp. So we just recruited two more people. So far, we're looking good. We've got some really, really basic walls over there. Uh, which aren't great, but for the first few days, that should be enough to, uh, to keep the enemy at bay. And also, during the night, your archers are going to stand behind the, the walls. Like, this guy's actually venturing outside now, trying to hunt some animals. Uh, but during the night, they will stand at the, at the walls to kill any enemies. Alright, so this guy just gave me a bunch of coins. And at the start of the, of the day, I can give him a coin again. Just one coin. And during the next day, right, he's gonna, he's gonna get some goods, I believe, from his hut or something. And then he'll come back, uh, during the night, and then in the morning, he'll give me some money again, which is really cool. I wasn't really sure how that worked the first time. I was quite confused by it all. Um, but it is nice to, to see all these new mechanics. This is very, very different from the way everything used to work in the, um, the original kingdom. Here we go. So, you know, right now, this sounds maybe like a bit of a walkthrough, but eventually... Uh, you guys will be at the same... Oh, this guy has been killing a lot of animals. Good for you, buddy. That's right, just stick it to PETA. Um, what was I saying? Alright, it kind of sounds like a walkthrough right now, because I know what I'm talking about. Uh, but soon enough, that's gonna change, and I'll have no idea what's going on. Just like you guys, and then we'll, we'll be actually, uh, exploring again. Uh, let's see, this would be a bit of a waste, maybe. So I just upgraded the base camp. This is something that you want to be doing during the game as well, because it's going to unlock new things. So, for example, I just upgraded it twice, and boom, look at that. A new shop just opened up. Uh, this guy sells scythes, which are used as farming tools, but we don't have a farm yet. So, what we need is a farm. So we need to look for a suitable spot to set up one of these farms. I'm just gonna make one of these guys a farmer immediately. Uh, right now it might be a bit of a waste. Because he can't actually farm. 
but soon enough this will be worth it because right now we're actually earning coins by first of all we have the merchant and then also we have uh, the archers killing animals out there but soon enough you're not going to see that many animals anymore or the small amount of coins you get from it are just not going to be enough anymore and that's where the far the farmers actually come in because they can give you a lot more coins and that actually is the same as it was in the original kingdom although the farming tool used to be more expensive it actually is four coins now but they used to cost I believe six coins in the original game all right so it looks like there's not too many enemies out there all right this guy's on his way over here so I'm just gonna look for a oh boy all right, so this little streams of water that you'll see on the side of the map will actually um, serve as farms if you can reach them. Uh, thing is, this one's really far away, so it might not be that great for a farm. But on the other hand, all right, thank you, guy. Take my coin. Um, on the other hand, we've got this one on the right. And to get to it, I would actually have to get rid of this peasant camp. That's I like call them peasants. I don't know what they're called, um, but if we get rid of the camp, then people are not going to spawn there anymore, and we can't get more people from these. So it's a very delicate balance in uh, whether something is a good choice economically or in the long run, as well. All right, so I'm just going to put some coins into the chapel. We have a decent amount of coins, and this only requires a one-time investment. And when you do so. Uh, you'll see this very soon. We are going to be able to make some stone walls. But I think for now, we're just going to have to make a farm. Probably on the left side of the uh, of the camp. But if we're going to do that, I definitely want some more people... Uh, ...walking around. We're going to need, I think, at least one more builder would be nice. And then probably just one more archer. Uh, one thing I have noticed that you definitely want as many archers as you can possibly get. Uh, but if you start ignoring builders, then you're going to get in trouble. If, for example, one of your builders dies. Well, they don't die, but if an enemy gets to them, you are out one builder. And when you don't have people walking around that can actually build you stuff, then things are not looking good for you. So, that is definitely something to take into account. Alright, horsey's tired. Don't worry, horse. We have time. We should be okay. See, because we actually gave the merchant his coin at the very start of the day, uh, there's no danger to him. I'm not entirely sure if he can actually get grabbed, so to speak, by enemies, but... Just want to be sure, I guess. Alright, so we're going to get one archer. Actually, let's get two archers, because we got this guy, and we got two more on the way. Oh, we have that guy as well, I guess. Uh, so we're going to get one builder. Looks like it might be a little late, but we're going to start chopping down some of these trees in the morning to make room for the farm. It's actually not that far. I think we should be okay. And then you can't really see it that well, but behind this little plant over here is another uh, dirt mound. So there we would be able to make another um, wall there and a watchtower over here and basically um, expand the kingdom. It's really what we're doing at that point. All right, these guys are all good. How are my, my peasants doing? Are they almost there? That's right, you've run back. Now this is actually something that they really, they changed uh, really well from the original kingdom. Where sometimes, this is something that I ran into at least, uh, some archers would still stay outside the walls, or some builders as well actually. They would stay outside of the walls during the night and basically just, you know, let themselves be killed by the enemy. And now they actually just run back to camp. Which is really nice to see because that's going to save a lot of people a lot of frustration. It's just a really good AI overhaul there. Oh no! Little peasant man. Alright, this guy made it though. Here, I have a bow on me. Enjoy. Alright, let's grab this guy. Don't go back. You're with us now. You have one coin, so you don't have to be a peasant anymore, I guess. Alright, I think we have four builders, which should be enough. Alright, come on, merchant. Give me my money. I'm gonna need some cash to uh, expand towards the left. 
Yeah, thank you. Alright, so that should- oh, actually, I have to give him a coin. If you forget this, you're not gonna get any money the next day, so it's very important that you do give the merchant his coin, or you're basically just screwing yourself over. Don't want to do that. But yeah, anyway, guys, I'm gonna leave it here for now, actually. In the next part, we will be uh, expanding towards the left. We're gonna recruit more people and uh, basically expand our kingdom, which is really what this game is all about. We really want this farm, though, I'd say around day five. You want a farm set up, or at least I do, so that's what I'm gonna do. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. Now, I will be back soon with more kingdom. And since this is the first part of a series, if you would please consider, if you enjoyed the video, Please consider leaving a like as that really helps me out and I only ask this on the very first part of a series so I didn't I very much appreciate it. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed and I'll talk to you soon.